Greetings. We're Ron and Mavis Parola from Sydney, and it's great to be with you on this special occasion. We've been married for 63 years. On our wedding day, a beautiful blessing was bestowed on us. May you live to see your children and your children's children. Many years later, that blessing has been fulfilled in four children, eight grandchildren, and now three great-grandchildren. And we thank God for each of them every day. You know, no matter what our age or state of life, each of us is called to love. We each have a vocation to love, and that of course applies to all of us elderly, whether or not we're grandparents, dedicated singles, aunts, uncles, childless couples, or widowed. Pope Francis points out that old age is not a time to give up and lower the sails, rather it's a season for continuing to bear fruit as he says, we never retire. He, he also gives this a global dimension by calling for us to lead a revolution of tenderness, a compassionate and caring recognition of the goodness and humanity of others as our brothers and sisters, a grassroots revolution in which we see others with the same love and caring that we have for our own grandchildren. It's counter to the universal presence of the anger and division that even spills over into war. It's part of our universal vocation to love, and broadly speaking, as grandparents and elderly, we live this out in two particular ways. One is in what we have to give, and the other is in what we have to re what we receive. With regard to giving, first of all, we elderly have the gift of time. A modern phenomenon is that weekends are especially busy times for parents as they take their children from one activity to another and try to catch up on the household chores. By contrast, many grandparents have more time to listen, to affirm and to explore the world together. We can take our time showing a young child how to tie shoelaces, to cook, to throw a ball or to read. These are also precious opportunities to reflect to the child that he or she is loved. I remember helping a grandson plant a tomato seed. Over the next few months, it grew into a strong young plant and finally it produced its own tomatoes. It was a lesson in nature, but the biggest lesson was the loving bonding that grew between us. And of course, there are the endless sporting events that we can attend. We know grandparents who make a point of having an outing with just one grandchild at a time, just so that child can know how loved and special he or she is. Two of our three daughters are not married and they go out of their way to give time to their nephews and nieces and contribute enormously to their sense of self-worth. Caring for little ones can be a bit like having a second chance at parenting with the benefit of hindsight and of being a bit wiser and possibly less stressed. Sometimes it involves total care of grandchildren when their parents, for whatever reason, are unable to care for them. And that's an enormous sacrifice done with the greatest of love. Another important gift that we have is memories. For most families, the older generation is the central bank of memories. Memories are part of what make us who we are and they help us to understand ourselves. Without memories, our lives would be almost blank. In a multicultural society, storytelling is an important part of preserving our memories and our cultural heritages. Our grandchildren never tire of hearing stories about their own parents when they were children. Both my brothers died at the age of 50, leaving large families. And when we come together, the hunger for family memories of their fathers is very obvious. The grandparent-grandchild relationship is an interplay of mutual benefit. This reciprocal giving is demonstrated in many ways. For example, grandparents not only help grandchildren to play, the grandchildren in turn bring out the child within us and get us to play in ways in which we would never do otherwise. We used to enjoy taking our grandchildren to movies that we wouldn't go to just on our own. In our home, I've spent endless hours in imaginary tea parties with grandchildren, while at other times, Ron has been the imaginary horse 
on his hands and knees with grandchildren on his back. While doing something for them, we also enjoyed reliving our own childhood memories during those special moments. As the years roll on, grandparents can also pass on the deeper lessons of life. Sadly, we can't protect our grandchildren from the inevitable disappointments and failures, but we can be present to them at those times, letting them know that we too have had hurts and failures along the way. It helps them to see their own setbacks in perspective, and it gives us a sense of purpose, just from knowing that we can be there with them at those times. Psychologists talk of the importance of significant other adults in passing on values to children. In the pressured relationships of small nuclear families, and especially in single parent families, it is of enormous importance that parents have other relatable adults who share common values. This allows the children to hear the same messages in a variety of ways. Grandparents and older members of the family fulfill this role very naturally. Elders can also be a safety valve for the tensions in a family. An, an example of this was one evening we were at home and one of our teenage granddaughters phoned. Nonna, can I come to your place for the night? Of course you can, I said, wondering what in heaven's name was going on. A minute later, her mother rang and explained there had been a row in the family and her daughter was very angry and wanted to leave home. We had no idea how we were going to handle this, but when she arrived, we simply had a meal together and gradually she talked out her upset and started to relax and to see things in more perspective. The next day she went home a little wiser and a lot happier. We had simply been the safety valve that allowed her to let off steam in a safe environment. And it underlines the importance of always being a welcoming presence. Being older and more experienced can give us a better perspective on life because in a sense we've seen it all before and the resilience of the older generation can be an important source of comfort and reassurance for the young. But we older ones also benefit from contact with youth who can share with us their enthusiasm and their hope and young people ask good questions and can come up with new ways of looking at things. And of course, they can keep us learning by teaching us new technologies. And these technologies can be of particular importance when grandparents are separated from their loved ones because of geographical distance or sometimes family breakdown. And closer to home, that technology has certainly been put to good use during the pandemic. Nowhere is our presence as grandparents more important than in passing on the faith. Our witness speaks more loudly than our formal expressions of faith, important as they are. We can show our belief in God quite naturally in daily language, like when we say, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful sunset. Or when we say, isn't it wonderful that God has created such amazing colours in these flowers? We can witness to a Christian lifestyle when we show that there is more joy in giving than in receiving, or that in any discussion tenderness trumps anger every time, or that ambition without love results in a life that is barren and empty. And often this faith witness is expressed through small family rituals, such as grace before meals, celebrating patron saint feast days, and offering to pray for their special concerns. This is particularly obvious at milestone faith events such as baptism. For example, the presence of older people at baptisms is a physical reminder that the community in which the new child has been welcomed stretches back through the ages. At the recent baptism of our great-grandchild, there were four generations present as well as extended family. Their physical presence added meaning to the words of the old Eucharistic prayer. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself. And it helps us to appreciate the communion of saints. To appreciate such a spiritual communion, we need experiences of human community 
like the family and the parish. One of the biggest challenges as a child growing towards adulthood is in the area of sexuality. In their sexual identity and in the value of reserving sexual activity until they can commit themselves to a permanent married relationship. Children grow up in a society that bombards them with the idea that sex is just recreational activity, regardless of the relationship. Sacramental marriage gives just the opposite message, that sexual intimacy is the great tenderizer. We share ourselves with each other most fully physically, psychologically, and spiritually, making it the fullest expression of a committed lifelong relationship, the sort of relationship for which everyone yearns. And grandparents are in a unique position to be a clear sign that a long lasting and loving relationship is not only an achievable goal, but a highly desirable one. Another way in which we can pass on our faith is in our approach to the moral behaviour of the young. We find ourselves asking, are we behaving more like stern judges or more like the father of the prodigal son? That is all part of the revolution of tenderness that we are called to. Needless to say, none of this is easy. What we try to do is to clearly share our life and faith values while also making sure that they know that we are keen to listen in a non-judgmental way to what is happening in their lives. And above all, no matter what, we will always be there for them. Apart from what we elderly have to give, the other major way in which we respond to our mission to love is through what we receive. And this is best shown by how we respond to the challenges of ageing. We learn this through the reality that as we age, we gradually slow down physically and eventually become frail and even face serious illness. Mentally, we are less sharp and may be cognitively declining. Our very vulnerability, such as requiring someone to shop for us or to take us to appointments, is a living reminder that we are in need. But that is precisely where we become effective in our weakness. In this situation, we provide others with the opportunity to care for us and to see Jesus in our vulnerability. We become a reminder that our personal dignity is inherent in our personhood, not in our ability to do things. Also, our acceptance of support from others can be an enormous challenge in humility. And that humility and acceptance can be a wonderful lesson in life for others. Suffering can be a major feature of our lives as we grow older also. For example, loneliness from loss of a spouse or family members or friends. There can be sadness from the realisation that cherished dreams will never be accomplished. We share with many elderly friends a common source of sadness in the loss of faith practice amongst family members. We hear people say, oh, they're really quite spiritual. Well, that's just how it is these days. But in fact, we really long for them to be also part of the Eucharistic community. But how blessed we are to experience the gift of a long life, to be able to contribute to the lives of others with practical assistance where possible, or with prayer alone. In fact, our greatest gift as grandparents and elderly is that we can always pray. And we can pray with the greatest of confidence because Jesus tells us, I am always with you. In fact, we are part of a vast reservoir of prayer and a huge, powerful gift for church and society. Generally, the older we are, the more time we have to pray. And also, we tend to become more reflective in prayer. And being more reflective can make us more appreciative of blessings like good health, food, shelter, that young people may take for granted. So our prayers can reflect our gratitude for a lifetime of things that we have experienced. And in the process, we help to fill the void of ingratitude that's so evident in society. Also, as we mature with age, we recognise the huge importance of personal relationships. So our prayers for others take on a special intensity and depth. For example, we are especially conscious of the moral challenges that our grandchildren face in today's world. So we pray for each of them and by name, and we believe that it is reassuring and comforting for them 
to know that we pray for them daily. And the small acts that we do for them can become important parts of our prayer life when they are done with a sense of prayer, whether it be in a telephone call or email to encourage a grandchild or in any of the other myriads of things we try to do to support them in their lives. In all this, we can benefit from like-to-like -like support, learning the art of being a grandparent with others, sharing prayers, ideas and resources. We can do this through friends, parish contacts, and through organisations such as the Catholic Grandparents Association, which, amongst other activities, runs a monthly online meeting known as the Faith Cafe, which anyone in the world can join and we personally find it a great help. We're living in new and different times and we're called to self-invent our response to God's call to love, to discover new strengths for a new task. Medicine has expanded our lifespan. However, society has not caught up with this expansion of life. And maybe we as a church have not caught up with the fact that our spiritual formation is a lifelong process. So each year is a new opportunity to find new ways in our giving and receiving to bring about that revolution of tenderness, starting with those closest to us. And it is a time to awaken our collective sense of gratitude and respect for the elderly and to seek new ways of making them a living part of our community. It is said that the quality of a civilization is judged by the place given to its elderly but the civilization is also greatly enriched when it shows respect and honour and care for its elderly citizens. In conclusion, to recap on what Pope Francis has said, that there's no retirement. <laughs> there's just the joy of giving to the end. And of course, God never gives up on us. And we thank, thank you. you.